Welcome to the showcase of my infinitely scalable Conway's Game of Life, built in the digital optics sim. Currently, you're looking at a 64 by a 64 screen. And as you can see, it's a fully functional Conway's Game of Life. For example, up here, you currently can see a, a glider gun that's going back and forth and spawning these gliders. And they then load down the board. The game currently can roughly update every, can update three and a half times per second. So considering that there are more than 4,000 cells here, it actually still runs quite fast. It also has a very intuitive input. For example, here I can select an address. Let's say I want to write something down here. So with the X, I go all the way over here. And then let's say I want to build a glider here. And now I've got a glider here. Up here, I can just input the shape. And if we continue to let it run, the glider down here now also moves. So yeah. For the insides, as I said, it's infinitely scalable. The way this works is, for example, here you can see the smaller 32 by 32 blocks. And as you can see, there are lots of wires because obviously inside one of those blocks, uh, the cells only need to communicate with each other. But at the edge of, the, of this full block, those cells up here, of course, need to know what's going on with those cells up here. And so in this case, for example, here they have uh, the inputs for the northern bits, and they connect up here to this chip, and then the data flows down here. And here you can, for example, see those two bits are on, those indicate that those two cells here are on. And that way, this full block here, if we go back, you can see this is this block here. That way, this can stay alive because they correctly communicate over the edge. To scale this up even more, you would just have to put down more of those 32 by 32 blocks, for example, and then just always hook up all the wires correctly. Usually, here, the wiring is actually still fairly simple because usually, if I go into the 32 block, the wiring looks more like this. <laughs> Now, I did put a little bit more time in here to make the wires a little bit more clean, but then already took way too long. And here I have even more wires because in here, where we have four of those 16 by 16 cells, uh, I now also need to correctly uh, output to the, the inputs and outputs so the neighboring blocks can use that as well. Back here, I, I didn't do that anymore because I got lazy, but theoretically one could also scale it up even more. And then those 16 by 16 cells just consist of the 4 by 4 cells with an even worse wiring. And then the 4 by 4s are somewhat simple again. This down here is the clock, by the way. Because here each cell basically has a clock input. Uh, two bits for the initialization phase, or like writing the input. And then it has eight neighbor pins. And then I basically just had to make sure that this cell for the eight neighbor pins, like each of the eight neighbors connect to exactly one of those neighbor pins. And then the way those cells update, um, they basically here take the eight neighbor pins. I just throw them into the adder. Who, uh, just adds them up to a nice binary output. Then I have here this binary number. And this goes into the, the state calculator that determines if it should be alive or not in the next state. That's fairly easy. If, if it has like three neighbors, it gets alive. If it has two, it keeps its state. That's why here into the state calculator, it also feeds back in the old state. And otherwise, it always dies. And then here, there's just the deflip flop to store the state. And this little LED here is what's going to be the LED in there. So yeah, thanks for watching.